So when I received my first Bachmann HO train set around the age of seven or eight, I knew there was gonna be some day that I was gonna have my own model railroad and it was gonna be a pretty big thing. And I think also our local train show, the Plano train show, which happens every spring and fall and still happening 30 years later from the first time I went, I think that really cemented my idea that I was going to have a big train layout someday. Well, I got that chance. In 2021, my mom called me up and said, hey, there's an estate sale going on down the street. We're gonna go take a look. I think they have a lot of trains there. And boy, did they ever. It turns out it was a man who died, unfortunately, from cancer before he got to realize his dream of a backyard railroad. But he hit, didn't have just G gauge or G scale, as it's also known as. He had N, HO, and also a live steam ruby from the early 2000s. We made our offer while we were still living overseas in Liechtenstein. We made our offer over the phone, and thankfully my mom and her husband Norman helped truck it all away from the place where it was, and they stored it in their storage building for a little while, and I'm thankful for that. And that's how the Hats Railroad, or the huge accumulation of train stuff, got its start. At least that's what I was calling it in the first days. Well, we knew that we were going to buy a house eventually when we came back to the U.S., and in 2023, that's what happened. We were jokingly saying that the house has to be big enough or have a big enough backyard to accommodate the Hats Railroad at the time. And so much stuff in my collection, I knew that I just needed to start somewhere. So I began with a little bit of an inventory on what I had, began to separate out duplicate cars or cars that I just wasn't interested in keeping. I also started organizing the track so I could count how many different types of curves and straight sections and even switches that I had. And when it came time to get to work on my outside layout for the Garden Railroad, again, I just had to start. So that's what I did. I laid down three loops in the bed and then each of them getting smaller as you work towards the inside. In that first iteration, I had a turnout section or a runaround section. And just to celebrate, we got out my son's little Christmas story, battery powered train set, which also came with the huge purchase, of course. And it did pretty well for being plastic wheels on brass track. We got it around the loop a few times and it was a it was a pretty fun moment to kind of say that we accomplished our first garden railroad in that year. So I decided to put the railroad underneath two oak trees on the side of our house where there was already a raised bed around those trees. Gives a plenty of shade during the hot Texas summer. And aside from being a little bit of a nuisance in the fall with all the falling leaves, I can say it's worked out to be a great spot for a garden railroad so far, especially for getting things up off the ground I also put up what you see behind me. That also helped with my organizing to be able to have three rows of deadline space for all of my cars. And as I said, I've sold off probably 20 or 30 of them by now. So I was able to kind of make a compromise with this and maybe how big it could have been um, with my wife not wanting to decorate the whole garage with trains, let's say. So that first iteration was pretty basic and I just was able to make it a little bit better over time by watching videos that I've seen on YouTube. There's so many different ways that you can put ballast under the track or the little rocks that you see underneath, just like a real railroad. You need to do that to support the track. And for me, running direct power or direct current DC power to my railroad, it's very important for all those joints to stay connected and stay tight. There's a lot of different ways in 2024 to power your railroad which include DC, the oldest and let's say the most basic way. Then you have DCC, which is kind of a digital component in that direct track power. And then beyond that, you have battery power with different types of protocols like RailPro or MTH. There's lots of different options that are out there and there'll be more on that in another video to come. And as I was going through my collection, I knew that there were gonna be some cars that I just had to keep like this Hershey's Kisses boxcar from Bachman. My wife said, you gotta keep that one because well, she loves Hershey's Kisses and I gotta say, I gotta give her a lot of kisses and a lot of hugs for letting me take on such a crazy hobby like this one. Um, and then there were some cars that we bought with my son while I was at the train show. Of course, he had to pick out a big bright yellow one, Union Pacific. It was almost the same size as him, of course. 
Almost every car on the wall behind me has a little bit of a story behind it or some kind of attachment to me or to my family, and I'd love to tell you that story in another video some other day. So as far as advice for getting started in garden railroading, you're going to hear a pretty clear theme as I'm giving you these quick tips. So you're going to want to start by looking for any kind of locomotive, rolling stock, and track. Just look for anything out there. You might have your eye on a specific railroad, a reporting mark, or a certain era, but if you're just excited to get going, have a look at Facebook Marketplace. There's lots of websites out there also offering used trains for sale. They're stores that are selling them new, but, but as G-Scale as a hobby is a bit coming into its Renaissance era, there's also people that are simply giving up their collections because it's either time, their time in their life or they want to move on to something else. So there's a lot of turnover happening in the hobby right now and a lot of really good and well taken care of used rolling stock and engines and track all out there from brands like LGB, Aristocraft, USA Trains and others. The second step of course is start thinking about your layout. Start thinking about where in your yard or in your house that you'd want to put your garden railroad. Keeping in mind harsh summer sun like here in Texas or any other sunny climate. You also want to keep it up out of the mud and water. Obviously it's an electric toy in the end and don't let anybody tell you it's not a toy. We're just big kids here of course. But you also want to keep in mind buying some rock to support your train bed, to support the tracks in your train bed and so on. Then you just want to put it together. Just put the thing together. Just even if you don't have all the materials yet, just get it together in your yard, whether it's a DC or a battery powered set. Just lay it out there, start running some trains. Take the little wins by getting your train track into the yard and running it around and around the loop a few times. It's going to put a big smile on your face. It's going to make you feel like you accomplished something to be able to run trains outside. Above all, just get started. Yes, it can be a little bit intimidating and overwhelming if you get too far down the rabbit hole of which era or which reporting mark that you want to model after. Don't get too worried or tripped up in the details. You just want to get going. And it starts by picking out a locomotive and a couple of pieces of rolling stock along with some track. You can also start to think about and daydream where you want your railroad to be set up and where in your yard and what the layout might look like. And then finally, you just want to get it out there, get it put together, get some power into that track or into your battery powered locomotives if you go that route. And just make a few laps because once you run that train outside, you're going to want to keep going and keep improving and making your layout even better.